this isn't this isn't like you know what is it red dead revolver or whatever they don't have fast travel okay <laughs> they gotta deal with that goddamn wagon ride oh. and, and like and by the way it's not like oh well i guess we're just on the open trail and on the open road no even on the inside that thing you're like <laughs> There's no such thing as <laughs> suspension. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, God. Ah! <laughs> For fucking 13 hours. God shit. Well, hello there. Welcome to a brand new episode of the Confused Breakfast Podcast. Do you remember the pure joy of a trip to the video rental store as a kid? Sure do. Listen, sure, it's hard to beat the ease of the modern era in streaming platforms where you don't even have to leave your couch. But there was something truly special about leaving your sick wife at home, heading to Blockbuster, and renting a movie with your girlfriend. Mm. On this podcast, <laughs> on this podcast, we revisit and dissect some of our favorite childhood movies from that magical era to see if they still move us the way they did as kids. I'm your host, Mike Schulte. Joining me, as always, two dudes who, if I didn't think they were my friends, I don't think I could bear it. Sean Pryor and AJ Vance, <laughs> how the heck are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. You're good. I'm doing very good. Um, I'm already getting hot. And so I think it's coming going to my brain. Is it? Can we describe it for our audio listeners? Because you know we have thirty thousand people that are going to listen to this, but we have like seven that are going to watch on YouTube and yeah, see yeah, you in your true, costume. True. I uh, I'm wearing a, a duster this time, not a trench coat. I'm wearing a, a, a <laughs> please, authentic please. Western duster <laughs> and a straw cowboy hat that I bought from Come and Go. <laughs> And if you don't know what Come and Howdy. Go is, that's the name of a gas station in the Midwest. Come yeah. and Go. Spell with a K. I love it. Superior to Quick Trip or Quick Star. Nah, not even true. <laughs> Definitely better than Casey's, though. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't want to add anything. <laughs> AJ's probably still taking his notes down because he's not prepared today. Well, boys, on today's wow. episode, Any jab he can get. <laughs> we discuss a movie about one of the most famous lawmen of the Old West. A movie featuring the best collection of mustaches ever assembled on screen. You're right. Ah, You're right. The best movie ever about Wyatt Earp. Fuck you, Kevin Costner. Yeah. We're, of course, talking about 1993's yeah. Tombstone. Well, damn, dang it. Ladies Craig. and gentlemen, it's time for another nostalgic journey to the past <laughs> with the confused breakfast. Sit back, relax, and enjoy wherever you are in the world. Take it away, boys. Well, if you are new to this podcast, we will be reviewing this movie scene by scene with a modern eye, but in That's order me. to do that properly, we got to talk about it in nostalgia. AJ, tell us the first time you ever saw this movie, what your thoughts were, and what your nostalgic rating is was. Howdy, partner. <laughs> Time to go rope me some cows. <laughs> 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 I don't know what this thing is that Garth does, but that's all I thought about was uh, was that. It's pretty perfect. Tombstone. Guys, let's go ahead and take it back to the Take It Back station, TBS. <laughs> all right. It's, I feel like the T in TBS stands for Tombstone. Back. Or <laughs> Tombstone <laughs> Broadcasting System. Tombstone. I remember making a Tombstone pizza and watching Tombstone on probably <laughs> Tombstone Station. Uh, <laughs> that's probably what this consisted of. Or, let's be real, TNT. Yeah. Yeah. Explosions. <laughs> <laughs> That's what our network is. Watching this on TV and always having to deal with stupid fucking commercials. Uh -huh. Just the worst. But um, but I remember watching this on TV all the time. And it just it was in syndication with one of these two stations at any given point. It was this Shawshank Redemption and, you know, what what else we got? Dumb and Dumber. There's something about Mary. They're, they're there. Yeah. Um, there it is. I loved it. I also just would watch it randomly and I never knew how the movie even came about. I don't think I ever watched the, the first 15 minutes, the last 20 minutes <laughs> or probably the middle 22 minutes. So <laughs> yeah, that adds up. You got it. There was a really solid 45 minutes of my childhood <laughs> rounded up by tombstone pizza, tombstone and TBS. So I'm going to go ahead and give this, uh, let's see, 45 minutes out of an hour. That's 
Like 7.5. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Good job. Sean, what about you, man? Uh, th- my parents love this movie. And uh, like my whole, f- like, I feel like my whole side of my mom's family loved this movie and like would quote it every time we, like, we went to uh, uh, family Christmases and stuff like that. And uh, so I watched it with them and I loved, I mean, I, back then you don't really like know that you love something, you know, until you like yeah. watch it when you're an adult. But I liked watching it. Um, just because it was cool. I liked my mom would always like narrate me through it. Like the, Oh, that, uh, Val Kilmer is super hot. And I'm like, yeah, mom, <laughs> nothing that had to pertain with the movie. <laughs> no, I totally like, agree. So Val Kilmer was in <laughs> Top Gun. <laughs> Val Kilmer's hot. All right. Check. Um, but yeah, she'd be like, Oh yeah, I'm your Huckleberry, like super famous lines, you know? And she would quote him all the time. And, uh, I, I, I say, wham, say, wham. Um, back then I'd probably have to say this is just like a movie to me. So, um, 6.5, 6.5 is a movie to Sean. I'm, (laughs) I'm going to (laughs) go just for anybody paying attention at home. I'm going to go actually (laughs) 6.4. I, I, I'm with you, AJ, man. Like I don't. I don't know that I ever actually watched this movie from start to finish. Yeah. I don't know if I, this may be the first time I ever went scene one to scene zero yeah. or whatever and just yeah. finished it. Ace but, is high. but I think I've seen every scene of this movie. You know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I've seen every bit of this movie. Legendary Old West character standing up for your brothers and yeah. your family, defeating the bad guys. I'm going to give it, I'm going to give it an 8.5 nostalgic family. <laughs> that takes us to a 7.5 nostalgically, which you would Told think you. would be pretty high. But we were dumbasses as kids. We liked a lot of movies real strong. That comes in <laughs> That comes in at number 44 of anything we've done. That is tied with Big and Hook. Okay. Which feels about right. Loving it strong. <laughs> I would watch all three of those movies all the damn time. In a row? Yeah. Triple feature? Yep. Triple it up. And with Tombstone. Let's Why go. Yeah. Why Let's not? go. Yeah. Well... That is our that is our nostalgic rating, friends. We are now moving on. We got to strip it away. We got to give it a modern day rating. And in order to do that, we start with pertinent, important movie details from Sean. What do you got, man? Produced by Sean Daniel James Jax. James Jax has been around the block on this show for a while. JJ and Bob Miss Misorowski, Mazorski. Written by Kevin Jari. I'm going to say Jari because I like that better. I yeah. think it's just Kevin Jar, but um, yeah. Jari's better. Also wrote Glory, uh, Rambo, First Blood Part 2, and The Mummy. Let's go. Let's go, the baby. The Mummy, baby. Cinematography by William A. Fraker, who also did Rosemary's Baby, Bullet, and 1941, and a movie that we definitely will cover hopefully sooner or later, War Games. Ooh. Yeah. Music by Bruce Broughton, also did Lost in Space. And every episode of Jag, Harry and the Hendersons, and Monster Squad. Let's go. Let's let's go. This I is guess. just a lineup of yeah. of, of <laughs> famous <laughs> people of this Line podcast. Up. Dude, I, man, I remember watching so much Jag. <laughs> Jag, I remember Jag. <laughs> you know what I remember <laughs> most about it? You know what I remember most about Jag was his great score. <laughs> no way. Here's what I remember about Jag. I had just I was way into like airplanes and like Top Gun, and I was like, yeah. oh, cool, it's a TV show about like aircraft carriers. And I watched one episode and went. This fucking sucks. Fuck this. <laughs> this, this sucks. Is, this came on. This came on after Tombstone was over because I, I came back from I, I missed the last twenty minutes because I came back from having to like go to di- eat dinner and then I finally got released from the table. I came back and it's fucking Jag and I was like, does God he ever, dang does it, he ever click. take that uniform off? <laughs> I was like, Oh, is Tom Cruise in this? Nope, click. <laughs> When, is, when do they ever fly planes? That's what I remember Jesus. about Jag is turning it off. That's like <laughs> 40, 14 seasons later. <laughs> <laughs> and directed by George B. Cosmatos. P. Cosmatos. Cast, Kurt Russell. Get ready. Kurt Russell, Val Kilmer, Sam Elliott, Bill Paxton, Powers Booth, Michael Bean, Jason Priestley, John Tenney, Stephen Lang, Thomas Hayden Church, Dana Delaney, Terry O'Quinn, Paula Malcolmson, Lisa Collins, Dana Wheeler Dickinson, Billy Zane, Michael Rooker, and Billy Bob fucking Thornton. Wow. Will you just will you just repeat that entire list, but only do like their first or last name? Russell, Kilmer, Elliot, Paxton, Booth, Bean, Priestley, Tenney, Lang, Church, Delaney. That's a that's a tough one because it's two. Uh O'Quinn, Malcolmson. Wheeler, Dickinson, Zane, <laughs> Rooker, and Thornton. That sounds like, I, I feel like you just, Zane, Rooker, Stevens, <laughs> Lang. I feel like that was a Lollapalooza lineup. <laughs> or, yeah, or I'm, I'm naming the lineup of the, of the first line of yeah. our hockey team. <laughs> yeah. 
Pirates. During the, I wish. Your starting lineup. <laughs> During the 90s, westerns were not really being made, with the, uh, but with the success of Dances with Wolves and Unforgiven, studios were ready to take a chance on a sprawling, star-studded western. Written uh, Our writer, Kevin Jari, coming off his successful script with Glory and his historical consultant, Jeff Morey, wrote the script for Tombstone, and the studios were chomping at the bit. Kevin Costner was attached... Uh, attracted to the script and with his clout in Hollywood at the time would hold up production because he wanted the story to focus more on Wyatt Earp rather than the ensemble James. <laughs> Sorry. What? I'm tripping myself up. I'm like breathing and I can hear myself fucking you're, wheeze. You're wheezing. Yeah, what the fuck? I Is that what that was? I have asthma, okay? <laughs> He's like, <laughs> Kevin Kessler. <laughs> Where's your dragon breath at? I got to get it out. <laughs> wow. I have to take this off. It's hidden in that okay, duster. You take, you take it out. Let me, let me ask you a quick question. Are you going to talk more about Kevin Costner right now? Yeah. Okay, then yeah, keep Just a little bit then. more. Okay, so <laughs> Kurt Russell came on board and basically nudged Costner out of the project. With backing from Russell, the project landed at Synergy Productions and Buena Vista Studios. Buena Vista being a subsidiary of Disney and Kurt Russell pretty much having... His his whole uh, like childhood actor history being at Disney, they're like he's a bankable name, so we're doing it. More on Kevin. Well, Costner. you do you have more on Kevin Costner? Yeah. I would like to talk. I I also the reason I said the you know I got that little dig at Kevin Costner in the beginning. I also heard that because he got nudged out of this, he then goes, well, I'm going to make my own then, yep. and his he knew his was coming out later. Yeah. So he basically tried to blackball this movie with the clout that he had. He tried to go around Hollywood being like, do not do not do that movie, do not release that movie. And so whoever eventually took a chance on it. But then I also heard that Kurt Russell and team bought out like every bit of Western clothing in America that like was rentable oh my and gosh. said, you can't, we have it all now. By Too the bad. guy who plays Texas Jack in the film. What? Yeah. So the guy who was like, uh, like they first come out of the, yes, the yes. thing shooting. And he's yeah, like, yeah. Doc, is that you? Doc? That's, that's, he that's owned a like all the, the Western and they said, no, we own it now. Yeah. No. And so he, so Kevin Costner had to go like overseas to get anything he needed. Oh man. What it's a, awesome. This was like peak stupid Kevin Costner period. Well, it's like, it's like he is. Between this and what we know about Waterworld and everything, yes. Ulysses Cut, uh, <laughs> he was just fighting the entire world of Hollywood. Just just because. Just, just because. He just was bucking and, the system. And he took that anger and put it into a character in Yellowstone. Like, well, I'm going to fight. Yeah. I'm going to fight. We're gonna Before fight. that, it was Mr. Brooks. <laughs> We're going to fight. Everyone, sweetie. <laughs> what? Is he dead yet in that <laughs> show? Don't tell me. <laughs> we don't even care. Jari had originally envisioned Willem Dafoe in the role of Doc Holliday, but the studio wanted to go with Val Kilmer instead, knowing he was a more bankable name. Another iteration of the cast would have seen Kurt Russell in the, in the role of Doc Holliday and Richard Gere as Wyatt. Having the primary cast filled out and a studio attached, Kevin Jari was set to make his directorial debut with Tombstone. Principal photography began in May 1993 with the pressure of his first feature combined with inexperience and the studio wanting to be the studio wanting the film to be out by Christmas of that year. Kevin Jari fell behind shooting schedule just one too many times and was fired by producer Andrew Vagna <laughs> after just one month. Um, he like wouldn't collaborate with the class, the, the cast or his cinematographer at all. Like he would only do like sprawling wide shots just because he's that's the Westerns <laughs> that he's seen. Yeah. And he wouldn't like, like people would come up to me like, so what's my motivation? He's like, I don't care. Just, uh, just go walk. walk Look, over I've got a wide shot to shoot. Yes. And like no coverage or anything. So the editors, like the editor on set, was just like, I'm, this is, this is all I have. This is going to be a nightmare. Um, John McTiernan was considered to replace him, but jo George Cosmatos was brought in. Cosmatos would not be much liked while on set. The director was extremely demanding and cold when it came to cast and crew. Michael Bean recalled that he never even really talked to Cosmatos, nor got much direction from him. Kurt Russell would be a unifying presence on set, talking to the actors about their characters and motivations, which would lead to Russell all but being a ghost director on this film. That's what I heard. Pretty much, a th from what I can tell, it was Cosmatos doing a lot of like the um, uh, blocking with the camera, and then Kurt Russell is like talking about the characters to the actors of of which they're playing, and kind of blocking them out as well. Um, he was. I think uh, Val Kilmer said in his uh, biography that uh, if not if it wasn't for Kurt Russell, this movie wouldn't have been a success. So, mm -hmm. all like all all but not all but directing. I think he uh, 
champion this movie as, as far as it has gone. It's like sure. it's like the godfather of this movie. He was just like the guy who was just this movie. He, he, he if, to be honest, he was kind of like he was kind of like Costner in Water, for Water Waterworld. Very true. He was we like him more. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's just the way he did it. <laughs> He's like, I don't need it. I don't need any credit for that. No, just, no I just no, want to no. make a good movie. Yeah. I work with I work with John Carpenter. I think I could direct a movie. I'm pretty sure. Tombstone was released on Christmas Day, 1993, and on a budget of 25 million dollars, the film would go on to make 73.2 million at the box office and become one of the most quintessential westerns of the modern era. Although Val Kilmer's performance was praised and is now legendary, the actor was not nominated for any awards except for Best Male Performance and Most Desirable Male at the MTV Movie Awards. Bullshit. <coughs> Top yeah. Gun reference there. <laughs> Bullshit. Pretty good. Or well, up next, we have AJ. You did some research for us. He gets us the ratings, reviews, critics, and fans alike. We got to know what people thought about this movie before we dissect it. What do you got, man? I didn't do any research, guys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> All right, well, we're going to go to scene one then. You'll be a tomato if you do. Ah, the tomato! tomato! <laughs> Gross! That's right. 72%. Certified fresh, though, still. That's number 55 of any movie we've done, tied with Big Trouble in Little China. Mm. Isn't that fun? Oh, Big isn't that fun? Trouble. Just saying. In, in Little China! China. <laughs> 94%. From the audiences, they disagree. They're like, no, this movie's bomb. And then 7.8 on IMDb. That is huge. Listen to the company that shares at a 7.8. Predator, Sandlot, Goonies, Breakfast Club, Ghostbusters. Wow. Pretty good. Decent. Pretty decent okay. stuff. It's like, meh. It's a you meh. Know? Meh. <sighs> I guess that's a fun night of movies. I guess. This person thought it was less than meh. This is the Miami Herald. Rene Rodriguez said, For the most part, Tombstone is inept. Some of the performances are wincingly bad. Dana Delaney playing the tourist, touring actress with the hots for Wyatt is, is particularly embarrassing. Director George P. Cosmatos uh, from Leviathan firmly cements his hack status. He takes nearly an hour to get things rolling, then fails to build any sort of momentum. I disagree. I disagree as well. It's like pretty okay. fast to it's get things rolling. Kind of fast. So actually, I feel like every scene's just like go, go, go in this movie. I feel like they tell us right at the beginning about how it gets going. <laughs> they're, they're like, "Here's, <laughs> can you spare us sixty seconds? We're going to tell you how this gets going. Then we're going to go." Hope that's fast enough for you, <laughs> Renee Rodriguez. <laughs> nope. Well, this person uh, over at IGN, Scott Lowe, gave it an eighty out of a hundred. Tombstone is incredibly entertaining. While not entirely original and not always well executed, it manages to keep your attention for the entire 130-minute duration. And let's face it, Val Kilmer as Doc Holliday is what really sets it apart. All right. All right. Guys, I got a couple of, a couple here for you. All right? I'll, uh, I'll do this one first since, well, Sean made mention of it. This is simply entitled, Nominated for Two MTV Movie Awards. <laughs> Megan E. Stallings, uh, 2021, uh, said, nominated for two MTV awards. Now, that really says all I need to say, LMAO. <laughs> really highbrow film here, folks. <laughs> okay. Dick. <laughs> what, what I just said is all I need to say. Is all I need to say. And now I'm done saying that. That's all I got to say about that. For now. How about one, uh, one more, uh, one out of ten here. Truly awful mm -hmm. from Mr. Teddy Bass in 2022. Said I remember this being critically mauled when it was released, but decided to watch it recently due to its high user reviews, thinking that it might be an overlooked classic. Don't make the mistake I did. The positive reviews are clearly from people who have never witnessed movie <laughs> moving pictures before. <laughs> It feels like someone did a TV movie in the style of a 50s Western, then hacked it down from eight hours to two, while still leaving in a pointless romantic subplot. I agree with that. It's a master class <laughs> in how not to direct and edit a film. <laughs> okay. <laughs> there it is. I'm surprised there was no, like, if I could give this a zero, I would. <laughs> Save yourself. He's grown up. 130 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> Truly awful. It's just bad. It's just bad. 
That's all I got, guys. Okay. That's all you got? Yeah. Oh, wow. I'm just going to keep it short and sweet. Let's. I like. I want to talk about this movie. It's a longer movie. Well, my dudes, from now on, when I see a red sash, I kill the man wearing it. You bet. So run, you cur. Tell the other curs the law is coming. You tell them I'm coming. And hell's coming, coming with, with me, you hear? Hell's coming, coming with, with me. me. I'm your huckleberry. I'm so fucking fired up. Here we Fuck go. Man, let's do this. Scene one. Curly Bill and his band of cowboys slaughter innocent people at a wedding. Wyatt Earp and his brothers Virgil and Morgan arrive in Tombstone, Arizona to settle down and start a new life. There, friend Doc Holliday arrives in town as well after outstaying his welcome <laughs> elsewhere. Um, it's nice. Robert Mitchum narrating this. I fucking love. Uh, Robert Tell Mitchum. the story on that. Well, Robert Mitchum was going to be, I think, the guy that they hold up Doc Holliday with later in the film. No, so, so I... Maybe I'm wrong on this, but actually, if you if you look historically on what really happened here, well, actually, um, yeah. that the Curly Bill was not the leader of the gang. It was the character he that was he, his, was he was supposed to dad. play. He was their dad. Yeah, like old man something was the literal leader of the Cowboys who at was, this time. Who was killed? I think in reality, who was killed by wh- wherever, like the wedding thing yes. right here is uh, actually kind of true. They killed somebody, but who they killed in reality was the Ike and, Cl- Ike and uh, Billy's dad. Billy's yes. dad, that's right. Uh, so Robert Mitchum, yeah, I think you're right. He was supposed to be like the main bad guy. Was going to play him, but um, on set he like fell from a horse and <laughs> like, got fucking fucked up and injured, so uh, he just did the narration for this. I think I, I love... One, Robert Mitchum's one of my favorite actors of all time. I mm. love... Um, uh, I have to think of the movie, but uh, it's it's one of my favorite movies of all time. He's a Mitchum, uh, man. I love him. I love him, and I, I'm, his presence is awesome here. And if, even if it's just his voice, because it's so good. This is so dumb, but it's so awesome to me that that they made this little intro scene and that it's them. And and it's just like that sped up, like old timey look. Very to the, seamless. Sepia tone. Oh, like it it literally looks like if you were an if you were an idiot, you'd be like, "Oh, this is a real this is a real movie." Like, wow, this is real. Consider scenes. me an idiot at ten years. For, yeah, for, where for, you're like, "Holy shit, they got the real footage." Yes. Of them? Yeah, there was times I kept watching it, and like my dumbass went as far like in today's world went as far as to, <laughs> to literally think. Wow, they like CGI'd their faces over those guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> no, AG, they went oh, to Goodwill wow. and bought an old camera. That they had to re- <laughs> wow, they, they really went all out trying to get that old timey look with the old camera they bought. It, <laughs> <laughs> it looks. I kind of want to make a video like that where we're like kind of walking around really fast, <laughs> like, <laughs> set, setting VHSs up. And stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you what, though, I've never seen this scene in my entire life. Like, no. I I have no clue that this was part the of the wedding scene. No, no, this oh. just this weird intro. I remember yeah. the wedding, but it definitely walked in like two minutes too late. My brother's like, "It's on!" I'm like, "I'm hurrying!" And then that scene was over. I have to finish watching my hands. <laughs> it always freaked me out. The the last one with that guy shooting the camera, and that's from I think the Great Train Robbery, yeah. which is a, a movie way back in the day. And I got, I read something where. Uh, when that movie first screened back in the day, uh, people thought they were like, oh, shit. Ah. Like, movies were, like, real to people. People were idiots in the 90s. <laughs> Ni- no, well, I mean, back when uh, oh. Great Train Robbery came <laughs> yeah. out. I thought you meant during Tombstone. But I was an idiot in, in the, the 90s. 20s. <laughs> I do like what he's saying, too. Like, uh, and, and after the 90s, they had some disappointing seasons, and then they had some great seasons making it to the playoffs, only to shit the bed the first game. They were known as the Dallas Cowboys. The Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> that was a little fun, little fun uh, football dig there for you. DraftKings. Uh, God. Yeah. <laughs> confused. I'll, confused. I'll tell you what, though. <laughs> even though, even though you do like him narrating, narrating this, I think it ended up for the better that he was not the like main antagonist, though. Yeah. Because, because man, like Curly Bill does it for me. Powers I booth. I don't know what it is. Every time I, I enjoy him more. Like I'm just like he's fucking cool bad guy. Yeah. And it's it's really interesting to me this Mexican um, wedding. Like you can see it in their faces. I never noticed it before, but the rest of the guys, these guys are like, oh my god, like what are we doing? Especially when um, Michael Rooker, yeah, just mm-hmm. all of them are just kind of like, this sucks. But what else would we be doing? You know, like we at least have sa- safety and we've got numbers and we've got food. Yeah, but I don't like that we're killing priests. Right and and our wording women because that I'm assuming that's what they did. Yeah, I don't know. You don't you don't really know, but uh, yeah, it, you I just like that subtle acting they have in there. They they're all just kind of going shit. Yeah, except for like the main antagonist, like especially uh, uh, Johnny Ringo, just like. <sighs> 
Johnny Ringo's. He's like he's shooting people like uh, Hannibal is like hacking that dude in in his prison cell. You know, like he's just like. <sighs> he loves it, dude. And Johnny Ringo's like, mm, this is my shit right this here. Is, this is my thing. This, you know, I, people like Sundays. People like just like drinking on their back on their back porch on Sundays. Yeah, this is my. Or thing. you know, getting married. <laughs> Weird. Having a feast. <laughs> Having just a great feast Having, with all your friends and family yeah. on a nice summer day. Yeah. Some people like that. Johnny Ringo just likes <laughs> killing them all. John Ringo does not like that. Uh, what if wild. they just join the wedding and like kind of crash it a little bit? Like if if they walked up to my wedding, we'd all be kind of like, well, shit. This but we'd also weird. be like, well, hey, great to meet you. What what's mine is yours. Enjoy. Please don't kill us. Owen Wilson and Vince Vaughn show up and just <laughs> kind of like, oh hi, I'm. I'm <laughs> Wedding crashers, wedding. the beginning. Hey! What, what wedding are we going to? Oh, it's a Mexican cowboy wedding? Well, yeah. get your hats and uh, get your saddlebags, and here we go. It's the Ortiz wedding. It's the uh, Federale <laughs> wedding that's happening down the way. It's just like, they're all Mexican. Because, like, I didn't realize that, but but they do kind of, you do find out, or they kind of clarify, Curly Bill says it, too, is, like, they're, like, uh, uh, Mexican uh, police. Is what That's they, what like, those people were? A lot of them mm. are, like, they're, they are, they're, like, um, federales. federales, basically, that they're they are they're um like a federal police for force, and one of them was being mar- was getting married. So that's kind of why they were. And they th- didn't just stumble why, upon it. That's right, and that's why he says you guys killed two ah. cowboys, and it's like yeah, they did because they're Mexican police because they're police. Yes. that's what they're supposed to do. Yeah, they're they're federal like police. that makes sense. Yeah. Talk so. about a shotgun wedding. Oh! <laughs> oh. Hell, man. He's back. He just, he's, and he's back. Now that he took his jacket and his hat off, he's That's back, right, guys. Daddy. I feel great. Yeah. Well, then let's let's Thanks. talk about how... <laughs> listen, Kurt Russell is a handsome man. We've talked about him on many episodes. Yes. Already. When you add this mustache to him, it's just one of the most impressive mustaches I've ever seen in my life. It's real. And I wanted to just, my note was, one of the best mustaches ever. And then a couple minutes later, I was like, oops, never mind. Sam Elliott's in this movie. <laughs> oh, shit, <laughs> Sam Elliott's like, like, you can't, in that, to have that kind of a mustache and still not have the best one in the movie? Yeah. I get it. Yeah, I think they're all real except for B hands or it's one of it's one of the I Just think it's the Marshall one. or yeah one, Jason some, Priestley's maybe s- somebody is not real but uh, they all had him real and uh, yeah um, it makes it makes me super jealous of you guys and I'm sure Craig I just can't do it I just got pubes on my lip if there's if there is if there is one person who um, we now know for sure we knew right away. He is the younger brother. Even if he's not, it's Bill Paxton. Yeah, you know because, right away. I'm sorry. Yeah, you're just the younger brother because you have to play brothers with Kurt Russell and <laughs> like, <laughs> like, there's just no way, man. Yeah, I know, I get it. Like, I'm sorry. And like, obviously, Virgil's the oldest brother. Obviously, handlebar mustache, and then gray. you got Wyatt, and it's gray. Yeah. And then, well, I think it was always gray. Well, yeah. I think he, I think he came out he of the womb the with same. a gray mustache like that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, just absolute silver fox from the from the hole, uh, and then he, and then you got Wyatt, who's got a gorgeous mustache, so, tailored and everything, oof. and then Bill Paxton just coming up. <laughs> Dude might as well be wearing a backwards baseball cap <laughs> like in this fucking act. And he's just like, "Hey guys, you mind if I tag along?" Dude, it's yeah, like, come on, Morgan. is that the three brother cliche in all of movies though? <laughs> yeah, is oh, that yeah. the yeah, sorry AJ, but the younger brother's always just the worst. <laughs> He's just, hey guys. <laughs> guys! Hey guys! I can't believe we you invited me along to the trip. Mom said you. I have to. I get to go too. That's <laughs> what I did. You think I could come to Tombstone with you guys? You guys think I go Tombstone? Do oh I, boy, I love playing pool. Pool. <laughs> sure. You know what? When we grow up, we should all have pool tables in our houses. <laughs> exactly. Uh huh. <laughs> Yeah, Morgan. Yeah. Okay, Morgan. Yeah. And they even treat it the same way. He, like he just starts talking. And he's just like, nope. Don't say anything. Just stop talking. Just enjoy this moment. You always we... ruin shit like <laughs> this. <laughs> you just always got to fucking talk, don't you? Just shut anyway. up. Anyway. <laughs> but it's anyway. funny how Kurt's like so stoked to see them. He's like, Morgan, Virgil, holy shit, you're here. They got off the same train. 
did they really? No, 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 <laughs> yes. no. no. Are you sure? Yes, I mean the movie depicts it as they didn't. They got off a different train, but it still says fifty one fifty on the uh, side. Wait a second. <laughs> yes. No, it yeah, is man. depicted as they all sort of met at the station. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but also in reality, like it sounds like they were all pretty much together, like way, yeah. way before that. They, that they all went out to together. Do this. Yeah. Yeah. I, I imagine it's hard to make plans to travel in eighteen fifty four or yeah. whatever. Like to be like, hey, meet us at noon on August 7th at the Tucson train station. The biggest, Kay? yeah. The, okay. The, <laughs> all right. Okay. okay. See you there. All right. We'll be we there. talk about not having phones and trying to meet our friends <laughs> at, at a place. Good God. The biggest issue we have nowadays is somebody doesn't have an Apple phone in the in the group chat. Yeah. It's like, oh, their text message is going through in a separate uh, thing. Uh, 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 the green bubble. Uh. <laughs> well, I guess he's not going to show up. Whatever. But like trying to think of that. Think about how early you have to make plans like this because you've got to write a letter. <laughs> yes. And then hope it gets there. You actually by have Pony to write Express. probably four different letters yeah. so that because three of them might not make it. Right. And you'll never know that they didn't make St- it. Stagecoach robberies are a thing. Yeah. They happen all the time. And people really love just like robbing just mail because yeah. apparently mail, it was like, ah, I've got all their secrets now. It's <laughs> like, yeah, why'd you take my mail? <laughs> Such a stupid thing, you know? Why did it become a federal offense? I don't know. Because of this. Because of this shit. Smashing yeah. mailboxes is a federal offense. <laughs> That's you offense. couldn't get much... I don't think you could get a more perfect cast to play the Earp Brothers, which is not all of them, actually. But these three... Yeah, they said historically five of them were in town. Five of them were yeah. in town. I was like, we don't have time for all this. We don't have time for that. Like Mor- Morgan is, you know, baggage enough. Yeah. Um, but like Bill Paxton, Sam Elliott, and Kurt Russell, it's... This is the, the the epitome of like a male badassness, and then you get to Val Kilmer. <sighs> yeah. Oh yeah. And enter Val Kilmer here. Just the most brilliant. Uh, that guy isn't on camera without taking a damn drink out of that that sippy cup. Yeah. That little handle silver cup. Prop. Oh, Got it. just reached it. it. <laughs> Here's a prop. I was <laughs> just <laughs> prop. Yep. Silver. Silver cup of Doc uh, Holiday. You got some? I'm taking uh, Maddie. I'm taking all of her laudanum. Yeah, that's my. I, <laughs> that was my other one. <laughs> so you can this, flush it down the toilet? I this wanted bitch, some. This bitch needs to shut the fuck up. Like, I'm just like, oh, I'm just, I, I need, I need my laudanum. I, do you, I'm just, I just get these headaches. I just get these headaches. Yeah, because you keep taking. You keep it. doing it. <laughs> You're an opiate. Stop head. doing it. <laughs> That's all you gotta do. What do they say? Laud- laudanum is is uh, it's a tincture of opium. Yeah. yeah, it's basically just like liquid opium. Yeah, that they that was over the counter. It just stupefies you. It was over the counter for headaches and cough and highly addictive. Would yeah. you like? Would you like actual Coke, Coca Cola, or would you like uh, liquid opium? Uh, well, I just got a headache. Opium it is. <laughs> it's like, well, okay. <laughs> you want to go to sleep for 16 hours? Uh, Opium. Yeah, exactly. Man, all right. I just want, I wanted both of those, but uh, I'll take, I'll take Wyatt Earp's gun with the engraving on nice. it. And in, in the box and all that stuff. Yeah. Good. His, his old trusty steed. The old trusty. I don't know. I don't know guns. <laughs> it's, don't it's know. A, that's what they call him. Yeah. That's what they call him. Okay. Yeah, so then I, that's what I want. I, I think if you're going to talk about how badass these guys are, though, Sean, uh, how perfect they are, there might not be a, mo- a better moment in film history of pure fucking swagger than when when he, first of all, we'll get to Billy Bob Thornton. The, you know, he, mm. he, he manhandles Billy Bob Thornton. Yeah. Then he goes outside and Billy Bob Thornton's character comes out with a shotgun to yeah. kill him. And they basically uh, uh, fucking... Um, Who's Val Kilmer? Doc Holliday. Doc Holliday. Doc Holliday's like kind of stops him and is like, do you know who this is? And then they stand there and a man has a loaded shotgun five feet from them Mm -hmm. and he wants to kill them and they don't even acknowledge his presence. And they just talk. They're like, yeah, (laughs) weather's pretty great today. I'm sorry. I forgot you were there. Oh, I'm sorry. Like, the. I can't, I can't believe the swagger and the balls and just the cockiness of them. And it just it turns me on. I'm just like, fuck! It's awesome. I mean, he's just like, you may go now. You may go now. Leave that shotgun. He tries Smokes to hand it to him. And he says, no, just leave it right there. No, no, yeah, drop it. No, just leave it. He thanks him for doing this. Yeah. <laughs> that, that is pure power. But think about this. If, if, if Doc Holliday does not arrive at this exact moment, 
Movie's over. Wyatt Earp's dead. I have to think that <laughs> Wyatt Earp's dead. The, the whole thing's done. There's I have no to think that Wyatt he Earp. got there a little bit before them and was like <laughs> hanging out, you know, like getting his own game going on with uh, Kate. Yeah, Big Nose Kate. I can't I, say that big, nowadays. Yeah, oh, you on, can't? Yeah, you no, know, you you just call her Kate. Yep. Kate. Just call her Kate. She's no. You're gonna get we're gonna get hate. You cannot say I've that. I've been to Tombstone and uh, that's no. the bar is called Kate. <laughs> Kate. Gotcha. That's what it's called. Okay. Yeah. All right. Anyway. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> whatever. Fuck okay. Cancel me. Fuck me. Uh, uh, you think we fucking care? <laughs> you know what? You should sanction me. As you say. <laughs> so uh, I, before this one, he is like in this gambling thing. Um, it, like even his swagger in here, he's like, in that a daisy? Like just fucking with this guy. I think that's actually Frank Stallone. Uh, is it really? I think, yeah, I think that's Frank Stallone. Um, but... His absolute badassness, but also his uh, like willingness to just kill or stab somebody or steal. Did you see him and walk like, out with the money on purpose? Like this guy's none of these guys are good guys at Correct. all, right? And in real life for sure. But even in this movie where Doc Holliday is like stealing money and he stabs a dude, and uh, you know, I guess he's got nothing to live for really at this no, point. But, but you can definitely see that. But even dude, even th this was just a different time. Even the Earps were like pieces of shit before they decided to clean their act up. Like yeah. everyone was bad at some point in their life. It's just who who made it, who lived long enough to maybe make a change and be better. Like I, I, I think they all did really terrible things <laughs> at some point in their life. It yeah. was this is the time in America I wouldn't want to ever live in. It's, uh, it's I wouldn't last a day. I know. Like cause because God knows none of us could keep our mouths shut long enough. You know what I mean? We'd, just, we'd be cracking jokes like we are here, and we'd be like, <laughs> <laughs> we'd be dead. We'd be Bill um, and Ted going to the Wild West. Yeah, exactly. That'd be the exact same thing. Within five minutes, yeah. big problem. <laughs> like, but but I, I do remember when I was, when I was reading through um, and trying to find stuff for this, it's one of the one of the interesting things is Wyatt Earp lived into the early 1900s and like early years of Hollywood. Mm -hmm. And he would hang out with a lot of Hollywood people. Um, and one of the one of the interesting things was like somebody I can't remember who it was, but somebody actually had kind of a detailed um, log of what was happening in Tombstone and kind of followed when Wyatt Earp was around and kind of wrote some things like he was not. A great American hero. No, he wasn't, and like he caught a lot of flack for this. Wyatt Earp, and then after he even passed away, his wife was coming after this author and trying to trying to to get this tossed out or 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 or, sh or sh shut down. And then it kind of came to light. Yeah, it's actually all pretty true. Yep, he wasn't a very great person. <laughs> That's it's not good. Like he was a pimp before he came to Tombstone. That's what I'm yeah, and like he, like, you know, did like a bunch of gambling and shit like that. Like um, the way the way he met Maddie was in she real was life. Like she was he, a prostitute. All, in fact, all he of the Earp brothers were prostitutes. Yeah, Do you can pick up on that. Yeah. Earp brothers were <laughs> no the their their wives. Were. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah well, exactly. At Virgil's, he can get around. Where do you think you found that one? <laughs> and he said, he said probably the same place we did. <laughs> and you're just like okay, like. <laughs> But that's the thing. Times were different. Times times were different, okay? You Not know? a cell phone in sight, guys. Uh, dang straight. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. Not a TikTok in sight. Thank goodness. You know, if we could replace every phone in the country with a gun, things would be, would <laughs> be better. <laughs> wow. You know? I don't know, man. I really think so. <laughs> I really think a lot of things could be, <laughs> you know. Well, a lot more fun. You know, I, I want to go to a show. I want to go to a, like a performance, and I want to. I just want. I don't want to see any fucking like lights in, yeah. in in front of my eyes. You know, at a movie or anything. I want people to be like, "Fuck yeah, that I was want, sick." I want a, a a drum solo of gunshots and spittoons. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is Curly Bill the worst person in the history of the world? Be basically like talking at concerts and movies, just like. Oh, what's going on now? What are we doing? Oh, this is great. You guys see this? Hey, hey, what are they doing up there? Watch the fucking show. <laughs> Shut up. Oh, uh, this guy just throws and catches things. It's like, it's called juggling. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> hey, to your point though, AJ, uh, Wyatt Earp lived to be 81 years old. Yeah, and think about what he—he he was born in 1848, but he died in 1929. 
where he was literally hanging out in Hollywood, yeah, consulting on western, consulting on western films with people like John Wayne, electricity, radio, television, airplanes had all been invented, and when he was born, there were only twenty eight states, yeah, <laughs> and none of that. Like, that that's must, a weird. That is a that is a lot happened in eighty one years. That's got to be through. like our you know our like our critic things like they're like eight percent and then like the the audience is like 92 <laughs> yeah. or something like, you know that kind of difference that range that range is like one of the most astounding things like i can't imagine like being born in 91 i can't imagine like when i die what will have been done you know but if you think about like our our parents our parents from when they were born to now yeah a lot has changed but it doesn't feel like that much has changed no so yeah. will it will it be that way for us though, or was that just a weird period where things just went whoop? I don't know. Industrial Revolution, man. Dude, people started seeing in color all of a sudden. It was crazy. I know. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. You weird. Could, you could see in color eventually. It, it was, was like nuts. Evolution, industrial evolution. <laughs> Laudanum's a hell of a drug. <laughs> <laughs> Well, let's go on to scene two. So Wyatt and his brothers begin to profit from a stake in a gambling emporium and saloon when they have their first encounter with the Cowboys. Wyatt also begins to fall in love with a traveling actress named Josephine Marcus. One night, Curly Bill shoots and kills Marshal Fred White. Earp steps in and takes Curly Bill to jail where he's released due to no witnesses. I think, th you know, you, people remember this movie because of Al Kilmer and Doc Holliday. But yep. my favorite part about this movie is Kurt Russell and how much of a fucking badass he is. And it's like a lot of these lines, especially when he goes in to talk to Johnny Tyler. Mm. Uh, That's Billy Bob. Billy yeah. Bob Thor yeah. Did so, not recognize him, by the way, in the, like the. No, he's never first. Had a, like a lot of weight to him in this movie, you mm -hmm. know, like it seems a little thicker. He seems, hair. Yeah, no, no hair. Or it anything. was his voice that that was the telltale that of him yelling like. God damn, boy, get that cigarette out of my yeah. face, I told you. <laughs> you're just like, yeah, that's Billy Bob Thornton. He's like, oh, I'm, I'm real scared. Damn right you're scared. Damn right I you're scared. I see it in boy. your eyes. He's slapping Dude, him. I fucking love it so much. Like, he is, he makes me be like, yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm, I'm going to do that to everybody so I see. That's right. <laughs> God dang, I could, I could do that. I could do that. You let's you sk you skin that what does he say you skin that smoke is that smoke horse or I swear <laughs> see to what God, happens you see what happens <laughs> you're just like God yeah it's, it's like, so just, awesome man how well, do I talk like you yeah it's like the old times all you had all you had was like your reputation and the current moment of what you were doing and and many times it addresses this where people look into Wyatt's eyes they're like no no no. He's he's serious, you know. Like he's got a gun on him. He's bluffing. No, no I can see in his eyes he is not fucking bluffing. And that's what happened to Cur to Billy Bob's character. Is he looked at him? He's like, holy fucking shit. Yeah, he's this never been psycho. Like some somebody might have challenged him and be like, hey, will you quit it? Hey, come on! But that's shut about up it. down there. <laughs> hey, stop! I just want to play cards. <laughs> yes, that would have been me. <laughs> can we hey, just play hey, cards? Man, hey, hey, dude, can you just calm down a little bit? <laughs> ah! <laughs> oh, he's serious. Ooh. Well, if you think if you think Kurt Russell's the best part, I think this is the best scene though. Is Doc Holliday and Johnny Ringo? Mm. Like, if if you if you had to say quick a scene in Tombstone, like this is the one I would talk about the their little their little go to go off, you know, with the guns and the sippy and the, cup. Yeah. I, this did did you know? <laughs> Sorry, in fact, we're calling it a sippy it's a, cup. What, is great. What, what is he doing with <laughs> it? Sipping. He's sipping whiskey, mm. sipping cup. Did you did you look up their their um, back and forth in Latin? A little bit, yeah. It, it, it didn't really make a lot of sense. A, a lot like the Latin. Somebody somebody translated it like the, these are loose translations to actually tell you what they were trying to say. So Doc says this is all in Latin when they go back and forth. Says when I'm drinking, I speak my mind. Johnny Ringo says. Do what you do best. Doc Holliday says, I don't believe drinking is what I do best. And then Johnny Ringo says, he pats his gun and says, fools have to learn by experience. Doc Holliday says, rest in peace, meaning it's your funeral. Mm. Like that is their, no one knows what they're saying. These are two of the smartest dudes in the room. And they're just like, it's me and you. And they're speaking Latin, basically threatening each other's lives when everybody's like, it might as well be an empty room. It might as well. And I, no think one's that's, there. I think that's the interesting part of it is they're so locked in on each other um, <laughs> that nothing else really matters. But then you get the marshal who comes in and is like, well, oh, come on, boys. We don't <laughs> want trouble in any language. <laughs> <laughs> and I laugh. But preferably English so we can understand Could what you're you saying. Could you just please keep it in English just so us ignorant folks can speak American, okay? <laughs> now, if you're speaking German, I could tell you're. 
definitely upset no matter what's going on. <laughs> Latin, I wasn't I wasn't too sure, fellas. So uh, I just, fucking, just uh Man, I fucking love this scene. Like he's like Yep. I hate him. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> like he knows exactly his he literally has Curly or sorry, um uh Johnny Ringo is maybe the second best gunman in the world at this point. Are yeah. we assuming that they're two of the best and well known? Like he just yeah. doesn't give a shit. It's like, go ahead, man. Shoot me. And if they had fought Same right way. there, Johnny Ringo would have won, right? Like because Doc uh, Holiday's hammered. Does that not are they trying to imply that that being drunk does not like hinder your motor skills? Because it hinders mine. I think for I think for somebody like Doc Holliday, but they're always drunk. <laughs> so, yeah, somebody it's like Doc state dependent who's, learning, who's like as long as they do it while the they're drunk. It's like yeah. drink, it's like drinking games, man. They, yeah, it's state dependent learning. Like they've been learning how to shoot guns while. So they're actually, drinking. if they're sober, like yeah. they're worse. Is they're that probably what you're worse off. Maybe at least for Doc Holliday, Sh- hands shake, start to shake. <laughs> yeah, that's what happens. Yeah, I drink with this hand, I shoot with this hand. Like that's just like, <laughs> same thing, yeah. man. Yeah, I think it is. Uh, how much? I, yeah, Bill, go ahead. Billy Zane. Like, it's, I guess it's cool that he's in this movie. I like Billy Zane a lot, but I hate, like, the artist type where, he, where he's kind just like, stereotype. well, it looks like, looks as though you've taken a keen eye to the frontier type. <laughs> Eyes squinted by the sun and as sharp as a hawk. Happy hunting. Just <laughs> shut the fuck up. Like, I don't know what, like, he might as well be speaking Latin as well. I'm like... <laughs> Just, dude, I hate it. I hate that kind of yeah. thing where, like, the the theater the theater person. Sorry, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> well, Sean, you don't you don't talk like this at all. <laughs> Sorry, Craig. Well, Sean, do you hate do you hate it because you are it? Yeah, maybe, maybe. I, you know, I don't. <laughs> I, I reference <laughs> Sean, Sean, Sean hates this guy because he's like basically speaking poetry, but yet Sean, he, Sean in Sean's came journal, in with a like dusted cowboy hat. <laughs> he's describing <laughs> Halloween like yeah. with it, with poetry, just be like, it's beautiful art of death come upon me in the fall weather. <laughs> the veil is thinning. <laughs> the, veil is thinning. <laughs> the, the leaves fall just like my tears <laughs> because I know it's about to end here soon. <laughs> Dying to their last fall, their last drop. <laughs> <laughs> Tears don't fall. Oh wait, bullet for my Valentine. <laughs> oh yeah, 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 dude. yeah fuck <laughs> nice, dude. Nice. <laughs> no, I just like he's oh, just so like cheery. I'm like, yeah. dude, why are you so happy? Uh, you just got off a like an 18 hour wagon train. <laughs> They're, fuck you. They don't talk <laughs> about shut how up? bad travel would have been back then. <laughs> although, although Kurt Russell does get off his horse yeah. and is like doing these weird stretches. Yeah, he's like, yeah. Uh, uh, uh. dude. Yeah, you're right. Like this isn't this isn't like. You know what is it? Red Dead Revolver or whatever. They don't have fast travel. Okay, <laughs> they got to deal with that goddamn wagon ride. Oh. And, and like, and by the way, it's not like, oh well, I guess we're just on the open trail and on the open road. No, even on the inside that thing, you're like, <laughs> there's no such thing as <laughs> suspension. Oh Jesus Christ! Oh God! Ah! <laughs> For fucking thirteen hours, God. Yeah. Did, you, did you read what President Lincoln had to say the other day? I don't know if he's president. I don't know either. President Lincoln. Oh. Now, I'll, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and uh, double back on this. I actually love Billy Zane and his character. <laughs> like, and and then he describes Ru- like Russell just like exactly as he did. We, I'm like. God, yeah. Got all that just by looking at him. I wish somebody would say that about me. I know. It's like eyes squinted by the hawk. Like a hawk. <laughs> and I'm just like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah he is. He's just, yeah. And like and Billy Zane, Billy Zane, especially during this like that like theater show thing. Is that in this one or is that? Yeah, oh yeah, up? for sure. Okay. Like that is definitely another thing of like everybody shooting their guns and like by the way, they're up in the balcony and everybody's <laughs> shooting their guns. And now I really don't feel like it's any sort of like weird revelation why President Lincoln got shot in a theater. <laughs> FYI. Oh but no God. one batted an eye. <laughs> Everyone just yeah, sat there like, oh, a gunshot. Yeah, like, yeah every, like nobody probably realized it until oh afterwards. <laughs> it's like, well, well. He did do a good speech up on that stage. I, I really like that guy's acting. That's the kind of shit we like to see. <laughs> <laughs> now it's like... You know, that's the kind of pop you get back then, like yeah. as a comedian or some shit like that. Yeah, it tur- is. Turns oh, out, shit. turns out the richest guy in town's a drywall repair man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Every night he has to go to the theater. And be like, fuck. Just my God fucking damn. spackle. Just fucking mudding and taping, mudding and taping. <laughs> <laughs> I like how he's like, Johnny, what would you sell yourself for? 
I already did. I already did. I hate going places. I don't even know why I'm here. <laughs> I, I hate everything about life. I don't, I don't know why. I don't know why I do anything. What would you sell yourself for? I already did. What would you get? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like you got to get something. <laughs> it's like, what like nothing. Turns out it's a sham. It's like, oh, I already ate it. It's like <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> it was a snake. <laughs> it's so so it's we know it was food. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> it was already it just, okay. <laughs> and then we get to the most boring scenes of the fucking movie. The scenes? Yeah. Kay. Every time he is with Ju- uh, Josephine. Marcus. Josephine. I don't like this movie when it goes here. I like. I don't know. If, I don't know about you guys. Please tell me. I don't think this needs to be here. I do like the. Wyatt, I, I guess it, you're I, an oak. <laughs> I guess it Wyatt. adds like a more of like a heart to the movie rather than just being like this tough man movie. But um, I don't know. I I don't. I just I just don't like her character at all. I don't think Sean. I, I don't like. Maybe I'm in the minority here, but I've always and still do to this day felt bad for Maddie. Like this, this is just so weird. The whole movie, you're like, what the fuck, dude? Like, she always seems to walk in at the wrong time and see the <laughs> wrong thing. Like, no wonder she's fucking addicted to this shit, and nobody cares because he's just like, well, I gotta go. I know he just moved to this town, but now I work a job eighty hours a week. And I gotta be there, and like, <laughs> and I work at the worst hours of the time of the yeah, day. Yeah, so I know. Sorry, I can't be around. I know that you really don't know the rest of my family, but good luck. Yeah, like I, I don't know. Like I don't like. I've never liked Josephine <laughs> for like stealing, <laughs> stealing a man away from from Fucking Maddie. Home wrecker. God. She's a complete home wrecker. I'm, I'm a free spirit. <laughs> 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 what do you want out of life? <laughs> I'm so unpredictable, <laughs> <laughs> dude. <laughs> I'm so crazy and just <laughs> weird. Oh my yeah, god! god. You, you never seen anything like me before. Are you happy? <laughs> it's like it's, <laughs> it's like that girl on MySpace that you saw from afar. You're like, she's so fucking crazy. <laughs> yeah. And then you meet her, you're like, mm, yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Checks out. <laughs> Checks out. Are you happy? Because I am. I never know what I'm gonna do next. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> it's exhausting. Are you happy in your marriage? <laughs> How many times do you have sex a week? <laughs> oh, I, I, I ask you? whatever's on top of my mind. Wow. <laughs> it just comes out. I don't have a filter. <laughs> <laughs> room service. <laughs> <laughs> like there was really room service in 1855. <laughs> who the fuck's getting room service? Who's who has time to deliver you know what room I, you service? You know what I like to do when I get to a hotel when I'm in a new town and I like to watch pay-per-view. <laughs> <laughs> Really? Yeah. That sounds boring as fuck. <laughs> back, Josephine. Back then it was back then they just delivered the newspaper <laughs> and <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Pay per view. Wow. These are great stories. Wow, look at the pay per view. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. And then he goes straight to Maddie and he's like you ever just like want to go to somewhere and live off room service? She's, She's like, like, "What's room service?" I don't. Yeah, fucking like, who the fuck knows what that is? I have no idea what you're talking about. But dude, I haven't I, seen you in twelve hours. I got a theory, and I thought I read that that if this would have been like it was in the script that they that they totally fucking bombed. Yeah. So like he's feeling pure guilt at this point, and he's going back, being like, "I love you. Yeah. Maybe we should leave because I don't want you to be around." <laughs> Josephine anymore now that I've gotten my thing with her because she's totally going to say something <laughs> so we should go I don't really want to be around her anymore <laughs> boy what a what a rough <laughs> must be rough back then huh it's like oh no it's like talk about small town travels news travels fast <laughs> it's like I'm surprised that that news didn't make it back to Maddie before, before he, he got actually back. got back yeah no Man. shit no, and, and like, yeah, you f- finally get past that scene, Sean, and now you're into, again, some craziness. This is just a lesson in leaving well enough alone. Yep. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, you feel that Curly Bill's out there. He does what he does. This is not, why this is not your fucking business. Mm-hmm. You are not the, you are not the law. Make the law go do that. There were, I don't know how many people in that theater shooting their guns off yes. in a closed environment. And then one person, Curly Bill, drunk outside shooting his gun at random shit. That seems That's upsetting. gonna piss you off. That's nuts, dude. I don't know. You know, but we do get another fucking badass scene of like Kurt Russell taking charge and taking like, charge. Fucking, oh, I love this shit so this shit so much. And I love how Doc comes out and 
helps out with it too. It oh like, yeah, because it was it was about ready to get out of control. Though. Yeah, well he's like, uh, uh, your friends may get me in a rush, but I'm gonna not before I turn your head into a canoe. Not before I turn your <laughs> oh head into God. a canoe, dude. He's I'm so like, fucking badass. Yes. It's I was so like, awesome. So that's where they got it for the T1000. Yes, <laughs> they totally did. <laughs> that's where they that's got where it. That's where they got it. <laughs> Before I turn your head into a canoe. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, what, what, what year was that? Uh, 91. Okay. Yes. Or, uh, oh, wait, yes. so they got it from... Oh, Tuso got Tuso it from them. Got it like, from them. You know, it looked like it turned his head into a canoe. canoe. We should say that. Ooh, I like that. I'm going to save that for three <laughs> years from now, two years from now. It's like, it's a, they uh, did, did you read uh, the historical part about this, though, Sean? About yeah, what really happened here. So, like, Fred Wyatt was Fred White was the, actually the like Marshall. 23 years old at the time. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> but go ahead. No, yeah, uh, Curly Bill actually did shoot him, but in in like accident. Yeah. And 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 he lived long enough to like actually testify in court to say no, it was an accident. Yeah. And so Curly Bill was never charged with the murder. And in fact, Wyatt Earp stepped in. To keep the townsfolk from going nuts on him, on Curly Bill, yeah, they to want be like, to hang no, no, no. him right then. And no, there. no, no, no. Wait, we got to go through trial and stuff like that. So definitely, definitely, there is a lot of historical things that are correct in this, but that was one of the things. This is the turning point in the movie. For the most yeah. part, this movie is pretty accurate. Like yes. a lot of even like the the non sequitur scenes, like the Johnny Tyler with Billy Bob Thornton. Like yeah. a lot of that's real. Like he really kicked that motherfucker out. It's just little details yes. here and there they skew to make it a, a, a cohesive. And they story. need they need this because yeah. this yeah. is where the story moves forward and you see that look i never noticed the look on sam elliott's face from this point they this has happened and now they're playing pool and fucking virgil knows he's mm -hmm. like why just fuck this whole thing up yep he know you see he doesn't he doesn't say it he's got it in his face he's like god damn it we're we're all gonna die yeah he knows and but he but he basically goes well Every, I guess we got to do what we got to do. Yeah. Speaking of Virgil, in that moment, if there's one motherfucker who definitely messed up, it was Virgil running in there shooting a shotgun <laughs> when everybody's got guns <laughs> like this. <laughs> I ain't going to do this. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's going to happen in that yes. in that case. He runs in and shoots a shotgun. <laughs> like everybody's on fucking edge. Jeez, <laughs> ain't no way no one else shot. <laughs> I don't know. All right, break it up. No, no you're right. right. You're right. You're right. <laughs> Could you sh oh. Could you sh <laughs> <laughs> Un Unload both barrels and like trips over it. <laughs> uh. <laughs> He's just still pulling up his britches. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's move on to scene. Let's move on to scene three. So Virgil agrees to take the position of town marshal. This law maintains peace in Tombstown for a while, but eventually leads to a shootout at the OK Corral where the Earp brothers prevail. I'm sorry, it sounded like you said to Tombstown. Tombstone. Toontown? Tombstone. What did I say? This law maintains peace in Tombstown. It sounded like you said Tombstown for a second. <laughs> did I? I might have. I've I been know. struggling with it all no, night. No, no, no. Like I, I just it just made me think of like like now it's a cartoon. <laughs> Ever since Tombstone. we started recording, that's what you've been saying. <laughs> I've been fighting it. Actually, in the scene that you just talked about, is that where um, Ike and Virgil are are fighting? At the, um, at the, is that where you're talking about where he comes in with the shotgun? So, so no, they come no. break up the like the curly. Ah, bills. gotcha. They, yeah. So then, so then coming up, this is when Ike is sitting at a table, right, with Virgil, and and like there's that scene where um, they're all they all got guns. I man, I wish I would have wrote it down a little better, but there's like a weird flub where a bottle like falls. And one of the one of the dealers at the table just kind of reaches his hand out and grabs it. Yes. Did you notice yeah, that? Yeah, I've noticed that. Like the when I started like watching watching movies, I'm like, oh shit, that's fucking bad. That's definitely a moment that was not meant to be. Definitely. But it, this bottle just sort of gets knocked off a table, and he doesn't even look at it. He just goes and just catches it. Just a giant whiskey bottle. Really? Yeah, it's fucking cool. God. I think that's the scene that we're talking about. Yeah. yeah. Well, because yeah, because this is after. He is. They've made the rule in. Yes, you can't yes, carry gun. There it is. Yes. Well, it is. It is funny before this too when they're getting berated by Behan, 
uh, uh, Terry O'Quinn, by the way, fucking like just all the actors in this movie, goddamn it. But they're getting berated by him. He's like, ah, so you guys used to be uh, lawmen, huh? Yeah, you guys big, big and tough lawmen, and like no, nothing happened in your towns or anything. And you come here and uh, you just want to make a bunch of money and uh, do a bunch of drugs, smoke some, smoke some cigarettes, and drink a bunch of whiskey. That's fine. That's fine. You know, make a bu- make a bunch of money. Fuck us, right? Yeah, no, <laughs> no. we're good. No, yeah, no. Our, our sheriff just got or our uh, marshal marshal just got killed. Ah. Not, not a big deal. You guys keep playing pool. You guys are good. Uh, you know, don't feel bad about uh, not taking out my offer at all. Next scene. Well, <laughs> stars on Took their up chest. Your offer. <laughs> dude. <It's> like, <laughs> I, dude, I agree with them though for having not. Like, why do they? Why do they have to be the ones to do it? Yeah. I've been struggling that with my whole life is like not being the one. Not becoming a cop. No, yeah, not I don't want to be a, a cop. cop. <laughs> no, just not not being the one that has to help. You yeah. have to take it upon yourself. Like, stop being a yes man. Be like, yeah, I, like I'm sorry, I got to take care of my own stuff. Yeah, you know, well, like, even even like the fight, or the quote unquote fight between Johnny and Ringo and Doc Holliday. I love how uh, Wyatt is just sitting there, just quiet, mm-hmm. just quiet Twirling as hell. But a he, coin. he does have the the shotgun underneath yeah. the tail, but he's like, until something happens, I'm I'm fucking minding my yes. own goddamn yeah. business. It's not I my business until it becomes my business. Yeah. is well, basically what it is. And that's where Wyatt gets all mad now because they're fucking joining the the marshals. But Wyatt's the reason that they had to in the first place. Wyatt, you cannot you cannot stop a gang war. And then just be like, cool, we're done, right? Like yeah. you, you, you started this. Now we are in. Now we got to finish it. Yeah. And so he's very unrealistically mad about them joining the marshals or the town, whatever. Yeah. It, it's it's very true. I mean, I'm conflicted on it in the idea of them coming in every single time, and everybody up to this point, by the way, has been like. It, Wyatt wants to have the peaceful life now. Yes. He did his time of doing his duty and doing whatever, and it's like, I'm done with that. And he wants every his brothers to join that along with him. It's like, then you probably should just get the heck out of here and yeah. go to a place where this kind of stuff isn't happening. Yeah, don't yeah. go to Tombstone. How about you don't go to a place called Tombstone? <laughs> Let's go to a place named after where people die, let's and go we, to, we rectify something. Dude, for let's it. go to Palm Springs. Dude, let, yeah, Palm Springs sounds <laughs> nice. Sounds awesome this time of year. Wow, isn't it? guys, guys, let's let's go to Coffin Builder. <laughs> we should fucking go to Coffin Builder, and we'll start making. We'll start making like be be the will writers. Oh, we'll make a shit ton of money. You know what's cool? It's not too far from the town Death Angel. Oh, nice. It's oh, but cool. that's why Death Valley. Yeah, it de- right. Yeah. By Right Death next Valley. to Death Valley. You've been wow. there. You've been there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I totally. I was there in the Aught Twins. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dude, we and and I think uh, you know if we really wanted to though, I'm more of a cold climate person. We should go to Mount Doom. Mm, Mount Doom sounds. Let's fun. go to Mount Doom. Yeah. That way, in in <laughs> and we can have two homes. Right, we'll summer in Mount Doom. <laughs> and we'll winter, we'll winter in Tombstone. In tombstone. <laughs> and then you know we'll just and we'll just take. We'll take the the Death March Trail, right between both of them. You know, take, are, take everybody it, dies road to yeah. Death March Trail. <laughs> people people think this is scary, but a fun fact about Tombstone is I like that they have sixteen graveyards. Yeah, <laughs> dude. No wait, wait. Time out. Later in the movie, they showed the graveyard in Tombstone. Yes. There's like twenty plots. <laughs> It's like this is, the old, this is the old west. Fourteen people die a day. Yeah, exactly. What the fuck are we doing in this little graveyard? This, this whole thing should be covered. <laughs> That's the most prime real estate in this fucking world. <laughs> ah, cool. We we built a graveyard. Ah, oh, it's full. It's full. <laughs> we better expand. Tear down that fence. We've already outgrown it. It's like it's like, it's like playing Sims. You have to keep <laughs> buying land. Roller coaster tycoon. And be like, no, we got to keep spreading it. Yeah, we got to add more infrastructure. Oh yeah. Uh, like, Oh my God! But it, it's true. It, you know, it's like death is the most. I don't know. It's it's the most widespread commodity of this damn world. Yep. And and I, I just love how I love how Wyatt has approached at every single turn of every act of this movie, and he just kind of goes. It's like, hey, you're Wyatt Earp. Oh well, I'm a federal marshal. It's like. So I was gonna ask you. No, I don't. I don't want the job. What's that? <laughs> I don't want the job. I'm retired. Thanks, though. It's like, 
No, I was just going to ask if you were going to stick around afterwards or go have a drink or something. Like, I was just going to. Thought I could buy you a beer. Just thought I'd buy you a beer. So that's that's all I wanted. No, I don't want the job. It's like, I don't. <laughs> That's not what I'm asking. Actively, you. I'm not even. I, I'm not even taking money from you or anything. I'm. I'm not even giving you money like a job would. I'm giving you a beer to drink look, with me. I'd just like to maybe hear some stories. Like I lawman to lawman. I thought you might want to play some cards uh, instead of playing solitaire for the rest of your fucking life. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. You playing spider on your phone yeah. again, <laughs> Kurt? <laughs> <laughs> why why would they walk though when they do head to okay corral one of the most famous stories of all time why is that house on fire i don't know it, I, it sure I, I, looks i have to assume cool. it's like the the cowboys just like fuck this house on their way to the okay corral man <laughs> every time there's a showdown in our town they burn our house down <laughs> <laughs> it sure make there's so many awesome shots in this movie of like silhouetted Cowboys and the sunset and slow yep. motion walking in front of fire. Oh, it's awesome. It's it's, it's so makes good. me want to be a badass. It's so good. And you know, like you just see like behind the scenes of like this like a tracking shot of them and there's like literally a fan over here and someone like throwing dust in it and that's yep. why you know you see the the passing <sighs> dust. It's just it, it's so atmospheric and like I think the cinematographer shot the fuck out of yeah. this movie. This is one of the movies uh, that we talk about, like uh, kind of Indiana Jones, where I want to see this movie black and white because there's Ooh, so many that like would be cool. yeah. so many like hard, stark kind of uh, juxtaposition colors. Yeah, that like especially like when uh, the reveal of Doc Holliday when he's like when we first see him, he like lifts up his hat. Ah. Like, that'd be such a good black and white like real moment, or like uh, even when he like does the Johnny Ringo. Um, when he got, when he goes to Johnny Ringo and he mm -hmm. reviewed like the the light yes, just he you're walks absolutely into right, the dude. light you know that it, would look cool as fuck I would love that I want to see a black and white version of this yeah that would be wonderful I think that this point of it too um, speaking of places that are like dead giveaways of why you shouldn't live here it's the <laughs> OK Corral not the really great corral <laughs> not not, uh, not the uh, gold, not the golden corral not the golden corral. <laughs> <laughs> just you know, there's they got great buns. Oh, we got to go down to the OK Corral. Okay, like, <laughs> all right. Oh, <laughs> uh, why can't they come on up here? That place isn't that great. It's like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like they maintenance your horses, but they they only give three horseshoes instead of four. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> every goddamn time. It's just they do the bare minimum. Their rating on Google is a three point four, like stars. <laughs> It's like, oh, they do okay down at that corral. <laughs> but <laughs> that's what they're doing. And they got to walk on down there. It's like, yeah, I guess we, we hold up in a town with everything is just mediocre. And uh, and by the way, the only thing that's down at the okay corral is more people who want to make more tombstones. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. Super freaking weird. And not fun pizzas. No. Actual no. stone tombs. I'm not, I'm not talking about a thin crust make your own pizza. He didn't have that then. I'm talking about death. That's all that's gonna come their way. And death happens. And death happens right here. And I love, I love uh, Doc Holliday's wink to Thomas Hayden Church's God. character Billy. It's like the whole, the whole thing is shot super well. Like this whole action scene. And I think, and what I love about it is that like a lot of these movies that like depict this happening. Um, like My Darling Clementine is actually one of my favorites. And I think that this movie took a lot from it. Uh, directed by John Ford. He uh, like all those movies led up to the OK Corral shootout, but this movie that's its like inciting incident, mm. and then like it's what happens after is the rest of the movie. I think it's awesome for that fact. You think this could be the climax of a story? Definitely, and it's not. They were like the halfway point. Yeah, I, I, what a badass fucking Doc Holiday, <clears throat> just full well knowing that he has another bullet in his gun. Yeah, and going click 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 and being like, oh no. Like, You're like a he knows. He fucking knows. He's like, come on, just come on. I think every fuck time, with you. come on, let's go. When he does that too, I think every time that he like makes a sound with, like he just knows it's him. He's like, <laughs> I don't know, just to taunt him a little bit more. Like he makes an actual like gunshot noise with his mouth. I don't think he does, but it, in my mind, it's, he does. It's so fucking cool. And then wow, that weird little sideways shot. Yeah. yeah. My God, Doc, you don't have to come. This isn't your fight. How dare you say something like that <laughs> to me? Hell of a thing <laughs> the to hell of a thing for you to say. It's like, well, I would miss that for the world. Yeah, it's my favorite just, shit, dude. Yeah, he's like, are you kidding me? You just, like, I just got done gambling for 36 hours straight. <laughs> <laughs> All I want to do is fuck some, fucking kill some dude. Well, he literally just got told he's got, like, maybe, what, four, two months, three yeah. months, something like that? Could be two days, yeah. two years. Yeah. 
Yeah, you know, and that's the other thing is it, it's it's kind of like Doc Holliday at this point more or less just has a death wish. Yeah, completely. I mean, that's just what he is. It's just what it is. And he's just going to run himself ragged because what else am I going to do? Like try to live four days longer than what I'm not even guaranteed? Like what? That's what I'm going to do? So him going down there with them is like, um, number one, it's – it's the ultimate because I think it's the ultimate psych out because you have oh, you put God. Doc yeah, you Holliday just shows up and like, Doc Damn Holliday. It. Yeah, he's he's as revered, if not more, especially for his gun skills than Wyatt Earp is. Yeah. So obviously that's going to psych them out first and foremost. And then he gives that wink, which I think I read that that was an improv moment. Yeah. yeah. And which I was like, OK, that's brilliant. <laughs> um, and I mean, like and him having that accent and. The, the verbiage that he uses, that was also very true. That was written down that yeah. Doc Holliday really said, did say that. Some of these things. You're a daisy if you do. He's like, like now I got you, Doc Holliday. You're a daisy if you do. <laughs> Click, boom, <laughs> yeah. before he killed that guy. Yeah, it's it's, it's really well Truly done, Truly the I ultimate think. badass in and, real life. Yeah, exactly. And like you said, Mike, this this could just as easily be the climax of yeah, the end of the movie. it could have been while we did it. Oh, we got to get back to, we saved a town. Because I kind of thought it was. Like, I, I on always first seem one. to envision that. that yeah. Oh, yeah, OK Corral. That's that mm-hmm. big shootout. Yep. Cool. No, more things happen. <laughs> yeah. Turns out it's like only like in the history, it was, they were like six feet apart from each other. Like and it lasts about or 30 seconds. It's a very small space. I, I have been to Tombstone. It's, have you really? Yeah, it's it's a really cool spot. I mean, it's you know a huge tourist trap. And you can go to the Birdcage Theater and yeah, shit like go, that, too? You, you can go to it. You can were, go there to, gu- were there bullet holes in the ceiling? I didn't see. I didn't see. I didn't like go for, far into it, but I've been to Kate's, the bar. <laughs> um, The character Kate. Yep. Mm. She's got a bar. It's apparently like all uh-huh. that is haunted and shit, you know. But like uh-huh. the, the Ghost Hunters <laughs> did one season <laughs> yes. three, yeah. Um, a lot of people have, and like you can see the OK Corral, and it's like maybe from that wall to this door over here, and like if we can get a wide shot, it's not. It's like it's not that big at all. Wow. It's like maybe like a, a few more feet from what you're seeing right now. That that that's it. That's why it was the OK Corral and not the Grand Corral. <laughs> Wasn't big. Yeah, the Grand Corral was down the way. They couldn't. Yeah. Too much, too much space for yeah. graveyards. <laughs> Scene four. <laughs> As retribution for the cowboy death, Wyatt's brothers are ambushed. Morgan is killed while Virgil's left handicapped, mm-hmm. causing Wyatt and his family to leave Tombstone. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm yeah. pretty sure I'm. I think I've been saying it Tombstone the whole show. All right, two cowboys try to ambush them. Wyatt protects his family, and puts them on a train out of Tombstone. And announces that he is a U.S. Marshal, <laughs> Tombstone. So I like. <laughs> Tombstone. Come on down to Tombstone. Come on down to Tombstone. <laughs> Just past Candyland. <laughs> so for some reason, Tombstone oh. sounds a lot less threatening than <laughs> Tombstone. <laughs> it sounds like where Yosemite Sam lives. <laughs> oh. Well, again, again, in the in the uh, annoying subplots of the movie, yeah. you've got you've got Josephine. Ru- running into the house of uh, the the herb ladies, bang, basically be like, "Hi, I'm the lady you don't know. You probably don't even know how I know where your house is, but I want to bang your husband. We should talk. We should talk. I know I shouldn't be here because <laughs> I've only really been here naked. <laughs> yeah, it's like, weird. Weirdly last enough. time I was here, I was a lot less dressed, but I shouldn't be here. But I have to tell you, I this. knew there was a key under the mat. Like I, I yeah. have to tell you <laughs> that the people we love, we all love, are getting shot. Right Wait, now. how did you get in here? <laughs> that door was locked. <laughs> I knew where the key was. Yeah, I, it, boring. I, I beg the question. Yeah. rock. I beg the question too, because Behan is talking to her before she goes to their house, and is like, "There's something big's gonna happen. Like, there's only gonna be one man in charge of Tombstone after tonight. And it's me, and it's me. And like, is he in on this? Oh yeah, because I, I think he's got. Because be. later, I they can't even say somebody even says I disarmed. He's like, I disarmed him. Yeah. at the OK Corral, and they did. They had tons of guns. Well, I feel yeah. like it was Behan, right? It was Behan. It had to yeah. have been. I mean, but like even later on in the movie, which we'll get to, is just like him and Jason Priestley are like with Johnny Ringo. I'm like, I, that didn't make sense to me. No. So I hope you guys can fill me in on that when we get there. But yeah, this this whole scene, like thunder and lightning and shit, I I oh. fucking lost my mind. I was so happy when Bill Paxton said the lightning's getting pretty close. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he was, said he looks at his what, wife. What, his year was, what year was Twister? <laughs> uh, 98, 97. <laughs> 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 K- 
God. I was, I was so happy. I'm like, I didn't even please think about do it. it. <laughs> 96, just three years later, he Hell was like, yeah. I've been there. <laughs> I've talked about storms and movies. tornado didn't even get him. It was it was a crash of thunder and a gunshot. Oh, God. I Now I forgot what I was going to say. I'm sorry. <laughs> Damn it. Well, isn't he... So Morgan... Is Morgan the first one shot? Uh, or no, Virgil, Virgil is. Virgil is. Virgil goes out, gets shot... Then Morgan basically is like, well, I'm just going to go play pool while my brother's... Well, yeah, he freaks out, and he's like, oh, shit's going down. We got to get out of here. And he goes, and then the next scene, he's just like... <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> he's just like, oh, I love playing pool. He's like, man, I'm going to have one of these game. in my house when I grow up. Go! <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what? Do you think... Do you think that this was Wyatt's grand fan theory for it. Do you think this is Wyatt's grand plan in the beginning? Like he didn't want his his wife, his fucking druggy wife Maddie. He wanted his family out of there as safe as possible. So when 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 Morgan gets killed, he puts on this fake persona of being like super sad and being like, "You guys won. You won. We're getting out of here." Well, bye. Bye. Best line in the movie, by the way, in my opinion. But then he knows full well he's just like, they're going to chase me. So we got to get out of town. I'm not going to tell anybody why. We're just going to take the family to the train station. Gets to the train station. He knows that if he can at least get his druggy wife on the train and his brother Virgil going to safety with his family, that now he can go on a fucking killing spree now that he wanted to. Now he can Because it seems like he just gave Like, your brother was just killed. <laughs> yeah. Why? Why? Why was the flip the switch flipped when they came after you at the train station and not when your brother died? Well, I think that was that was the switch. He was just he needed to be smart about it at first because he needed. So you think you you agree with me? You think he just was like, I'm gonna just try to get my family out of here before I go fucking ape shit? Yeah, I think at that point after Morgan was killed, yes, he he, he never planned on getting on that train. You're, no. you're not saying that he planned on getting his brother's killed. No, I'm saying, saying I'm saying he he was never going to get on that train. Oh yeah, no, I agree with you. Even though it makes it feel like they're getting, he's like, "You want? I'm out of here. Yep. I'm leaving." But that's when Ike and the other guy show up, and he's like, "Now I'm serious." Mm -hmm. Is that when he shows his U.S. Marshal badge? Mm -hmm. So he knew it all along. Oh yeah, he knew he wasn't getting on that train. Definitely. Wow. I think so. I, I think I think it had to be because you know he's. How 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 does he not expect them to come after yeah. him still at this point? He they only killed one of his brothers when he's killed when he's killed how many of theirs? Yeah. So he, he knew that they were gonna be coming. Um but I think that this is I think this is as this is where it just turns over for me. And like every single time I rewatch this, I rewatched this movie three times in preparation for this, and every single watch when this moment at the train station comes around goosebumps mm. i'm it's just like so awesome man. that train is slowly backing up the and steam is her. yes you cur and he and he he takes his his uh spur catches him yeah. Ike on the face with it and you're and he's he's like you tell him hell's coming with me hell's coming oh man it's i'm just like it's let's amazing, go <laughs> but also but also wyatt may i advise you to maybe just fucking kill ike and tell him not to tell anyone so you can just go fucking kill everyone what is the matter with you? Yeah, you, you, you know, let I go three times in this movie. Like, who was Stillwell anyway? <laughs> who gives a shit? Like Ike is Ike is a fucker. Kill that, kill that asshole. Hit it. Right. If we were on a train to yes. go punch a face, yeah. I'm on board. <laughs> and also, it's Stephen Stephen Lang. Stephen Lang. Never I didn't know for the longest Never. goddamn time. It's his voice. He hides it so well. Yeah. You know, I I only know you could probably tell me more. I only know Stephen Lang being the fucking Colonel in Avatar. Like I was just like, that's him. Don't breathe. Don't breathe. Yeah, um, unbelievable. It, yeah, he's he's at some other ones, uh, some other movies that he has been in. But uh, yeah, he this is not the type of character he normally plays. No. anymore. not the coward. Unrecognizable. Yeah, yeah, very much so. But he's yeah, he's my most punchable face. Definitely like, a punchable face, guy. but like in the best way because Stephen Lang such does such yes. a great job. Oh yeah. When when you can be that good at acting, we say all there, the time. There are people that are just really shitty at acting, and we're like punch that guy. But yeah. if you can be so good at being a bad guy, that's just the coolest thing. He's he's the little you know he's a little fucking pissant that runs around and don't eat, yeah, don't, don't shoot me. Like he's a I'm badass. Unarmed. He's a badass, but as soon as he's like fucked, he's not. You know, he's yeah. like a little child. You know, let it, me go. I promise. I, I'm so sorry. Hey, fuck you guys. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> hey, fuck you. I'm just kidding. 
<laughs> Suck my balls out. <laughs> oh, well, let's jump into the Jarrett Layoff actor database. So listen to this. 17 actors oh, in this man. movie have been in at least two of our movies we've done. Wow. This is stacked. Uh, there are a lot at three, and there's one at four. Do you know who the one at four is? That is the most. Been in four movies we've done. And it's a bit of a trick question. Slightly a bit of a trick question. Sam Elliott. Sam Elliott falls three. in the three. Really? Yep. Okay. Along with Kurt Russell, Bill Paxton, Paxton. Powers Booth, Michael Bean, and Billy Zane. All been in three. Val Kilmer technically has been in four. If you count Top Gun Maverick, which we did. Uh, okay. Top Gun, Top that's Gun true, Maverick, that's true. and True Romance, that yeah, uncredited. Damn. Which is weird because he's like really hasn't like you know, he wasn't kind of in that, yeah. not that you know of, but yeah, so te the whole time. technically Val Kilmer is moving his way up the Mount Rushmore at this point. Nice. I'm down with that. I'm so down with that. Yeah. Love like me that. some Val Kilmer. Yes, sir. Uh, you you think you said that, um, well, bye is bye. one of your favorite lines. I, I also love, I was like, smell that, Bill? <laughs> Smells like someone died. And then, and then uh, Curly Bill's reaction, like, Jesus. Powers <laughs> Booth's reaction <laughs> to that. so good. <laughs> Powers Booth's reaction to that, Jesus. Jesus, Billy! <laughs> like I would, I would follow, I would follow Curly Bill. I, I'd be you hard understand why people to. do. If he found, if he found me in the right moment of life, I'd be like, "You're pretty cool." Yeah, like at those at those moments, like when he, especially because he is smart, he is conniving, he is he is a decent he's leader evil. of this because, and he's very lethal because, especially in those moments when, uh, like when Ringo is out there for the yes. challenge and. And Doc says, gives that famous line, I'm your Huckleberry. That's the perfect point because he he stops Johnny. He's like, he's like, you fucking hey, idiot. hey, he's like, just let, he's like, let it go. He's like, he's just drunk is all. <laughs> 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 he's like, like that little stuff. That's that's amazing. Because he's thinking more than than uh, uh, Johnny Ringo is. Johnny Ringo correct. is just literally like, well, I'm, I'm the best and I'm going to be the best. That's right. Curly Bill's like, yeah, we'll, there'll be another time. Yeah. And I gotta give some credit to to um uh what's his name who plays uh, Johnny Ringo Michael Bean yeah. Michael Bean he's so fucking he's goodness. so good and he he delivers he's a, sorry he's a two for us aliens he, he's and, three three okay sorry he he is Terminator. one of those that's right um well we didn't do OG Terminator he's in he's in two right mm -mm. I don't know I have no idea I can't I'll find out now. while you're talking well so anyways. He has that line that I think he delivered so perfectly in that moment too, of it's like it's like we don't want nothing. He's like, well, you got trouble. It's like, what do you want? He's like, I want your blood. I want your souls. You know, he does <laughs> that on both, <laughs> right, both now. right now. And you're just like, gosh, man, these guys are just they are out for it. The Rock, the uh, Rock. That's there right. it was. That's right. That's right. Thank yes. you, Jarrett. Uh, one thing I was gonna say, and oh, I no. forget. I will say Cut. it, and I bet this is what you were gonna say. And if it is, you can stop me. Uh, there is a really cool thing that you don't notice until somebody points it out. In pretty much every close-up of the film on Michael Bean, there is zero blinking going on in his face. Hmm. Uh, he he's just wild, it's like ferociously just steady-eyed. And then when you get to that final scene with uh, Doc Holliday in the mm -hmm. woods, he blinks. Like showing that uh, like unnerving of like he's finally he knows he's beat. Huh. Like he always thinks he's the tough guy in the room and he finally realizes he might be the guy that's beat there. Interesting. Mm. Just a nice little maybe directing touch there. Yeah. Or editing touch, however you yeah, want to look at I, it. That's yeah. cool. I one thing I was gonna say, it was about Powers Booth. Uh the film Final Season, who uh uh the Sandlot director directed was gonna be filmed in Iowa about like an Iowa baseball Norway. team. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, they held casting calls at our like local mall, and I went, and I wanted to be, I just wanted to be like a coffee go getter, like I wanted to be like a, a just be around a, the a film. PA pretty much, just to do anything, just because I wanted to meet Powers Booth. Oh, oh yeah, Jesus. because I knew he was in it, and I, I was, I didn't get it, but like that's the reason I wanted to go. I was such a fan of his because of this movie. Yeah. yeah. Goodbye. Well, let's move on to the last scene. So Wyatt tracks down every cowboy he can find and kills them, including a famous shootout with Curly Bill. Wyatt accepts a duel he can't win with Johnny Ringo, but Doc Holliday steps in and defeats Ringo. Doc dies in the hospital shortly after, and Wyatt goes to Colorado to settle down with Josephine. And you get a fucking montage of them just murking everybody, dude. dude. This movie fucking rules. Is he allowed? Is he allowed just because he's a U.S. Marshal, he can just go fucking kill everyone? <laughs> yes, License I guess. to kill, baby, James <laughs> Bond style. Like this, this is a little outrageous. 
to just be like, I'm just like he's above the law at this point. Yeah. Well, because I think really, I think really what this comes down to is, um, I mean, well, let's be real, guys. This movie's basically just Fast and the Furious family. <laughs> oh, true, true, um, very true. But, but I, but there's a moment. Uh, one of the things that they say in that the very first opening scene, um, with Robert Mitchum's uh, dialogue, is that it's the cowboys was really the first sign of organized crime, yeah, exactly. you know, in the country. and So they probably did have, like, yeah, warrants or... They had warrants, and so... That, right, and and just right. like he says, it's like seeing a red sash is seeing a gang color and seeing, uh, basically seeing that license to kill because of what the cowboys have done and what their past has has been up to this point. So at this point, at that, and then it's, yep, uh, you're wearing a red sash. You you can either take it off or you can die, and it's uh, no questions asked. So just like, and that's the thing. Like with Ike, he cowardly throws it three away three times. Three times he throws that thing away, basically, or or throws his hands up <sighs> and surrenders. So, uh, that was a selfish. I know that's what really happened, but I wanted to see Ike get his. I know, me yeah. too. That's why he's the most punchable face. Yep. Well, he even didn't get his. He didn't get it. Even the guy that's just like the, the music calms down after this, and it's just the guy like in the tent, just like smoking the pipe. Like, fuck, I'm already fucked up, dude. And he's just smoking <laughs> the pipe, and it's it's why it's bar- gun barrel. Like, yeah. <laughs> maybe he had a gun on his hand, but he wasn't gonna do anything with it. Let him chill for yes. a bit. Like, get him in the morning or something. You could sleep too. Yeah. Just wake up before him. God damn it! I don't know. Is it's a, it's a little it's a little just like guy was just trying to relax. You it know? was uh, that one that one was a little bit Elmer Fudd, <laughs> yeah. Bugs Bunny for me a little bit, and then there's just or like Wiley e. Coyote and all that was missing was the sign that just says, uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, it turned guys. I don't remember it turning this like cartoonish though. Like to that point, like the no yeah. no. What? No! I I like it starts to turn for me a little bit at the end of this movie where I'm yeah. like, mm, I saw I already saw my favorite scenes. The the like, curly you know? the curly bill shootout is one of those that seems like the tall tale of this whole yeah. Wyatt Earp story, which they say really happened. They say it really mm-hmm. happened, and it like that's fine. But it also seemed my only gripe with this is that it somehow felt anticlimactic you're, you're for Curly right. Bill. Yes. Because Curly Bill, in my opinion, was the big bad. Yes. And he's he's out. And they put Johnny Ringo as, you know, the dark horse of this gang, you know, the and that I don't know. For me it was it was a little lackluster at that very moment. Yeah. It's, it's I think it's the tricky thing of like putting reality to uh fiction or like, you know, trying uh, this movie, I guess, adapting uh reality into this for a movie's sake, yeah, where it's like, because also when Wyatt Earp died, he never had gotten even grazed by a bullet. So like, right. we don't even get the like, oh shit, he might like he got shot in the shoulder. Like he is not invincible. So we don't even get that like for movie's sake. You know what I'm right. saying? Like a good like uh, we love John McClane in Die Hard because he seems fallible. You know, he seems right. like not perfect. Indiana Jones, exactly. Like, yeah, that that could be it. That that might be it for me at least. Yeah, yeah, I, I, and I, yeah. I don't know. I I wanted a little bit more to that. And then again, that was that was I feel like they tried to pin that as, yeah, we had Wyatt Earp and, and Curly Bill. They should have had the showdown. Right. Should yeah. have. And then they do give us Doc Holliday and Johnny Ringo. But I feel like I just wish that that could have happened first. True. OK, M- I can maybe see that. maybe that's it. And I'm not saying like, oh, I want you to manipulate the timeline of things well, for me. But it's like, yeah, but you still have to commit to some storytelling, and I feel like that was... I think you're viewing this as uh, as Kurt Russell, Wyatt Earp being the main the character. The main character. And I, this is an ensemble. It's yeah. an ensemble right? cast. I mean, okay. it's, it's hard to see it because Kurt Russell is the number one most hardworking person in this film. Yeah. But the, truly, like, it's about everybody, mm-hmm. I think, in this movie. And especially now we've gotten to Doc Holliday. We've all fallen in love with him. We're like, yeah. let's see his... Let's see him. I wouldn't have liked to have seen him not make that kill. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> like if, he, if Wyatt would have somehow done it, I would have been like, yeah, that's not for me. If he wouldn't have made it, if he would, if the last thing we saw of him was the bed in that farmhouse yeah. and not the bed in the hospital, that wouldn't have worked. It wouldn't have worked, right? It wouldn't have worked to, for him to not have some sort of payoff. Yeah. So I do agree with that. But 
Yeah, I just I, it was like you said up to that point. I think I what should be the most powerful one of the most powerful scenes of this movie. I feel like I've seen everything I needed to see already, and then the, except for Doc Holliday getting his piece. Yeah, you know, which is so badass. I I, I love the conversation of him and Johnny Ringo. Um, apparently, like they don't know that it was Doc Holliday that did it or not. Yeah. Like he was just found under a tree with a bullet in his head and like his gun, like kind of barely hanging off his uh, uh, finger or whatever. But um, you know, I, I'll print the legend on it's, this. It's good. We're gonna say it's true. Doc Holliday did kill Johnny yeah. Rigo. Absolutely, we're gonna say it. Yeah, you have to. I, I, I'm glad that they kept a lot of those things, those small details in though that were from history of that him having his gun. He did have a bullet that was uh, expended from mm-hmm. his gun, um, one single bullet. They found one in his right temple. That was also accurate. Um, the only thing that wasn't, I think, was the boots, but he didn't have his boots on. Right. Um, they were still on history his, told us. Still on his um, um, Found horse. on his horse, his horse, which is what they would do back then to keep right. scorpions out of their boots, mm-hmm. yep. just hang them up on their horse while his horse got away is what they said. Yeah. So, But I still really like this, and I'm okay with stamping it in. We're just going to rewrite history. Yes, we're going to. And we're just going to say it's our show. Doc Holliday he did beat it. Johnny Ringo. It's our show. Cool. And we can do whatever the fuck we it. want. And I mean, he's got the wisdom of life, man. When he talks to Wyatt and he says, there's no normal life, just life. Yeah. Like, that hit me deep. Like, yeah. you're damn right. Like, there's no such thing as normal. It's just whatever you're living in. Yeah. And that is, there. you're never going to find something else. You're never going to find greener pastures. It's just fucking life, dude. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You only got one shot. And that that ending, too, with, I think that's so cool. Apparently, that really happened. Like, his last words were him looking at his mm-hmm. bare feet, being like, ain't that funny? Or something. Uh, I don't know what he says in the movie. He said something along those lines. Yeah. Of meaning. And I never caught that as a kid, what that meant. But... Most people never th- in that age never thought they would live to o- to be gotten by old age or mm-hmm. like a disease. They always thought they'd be shot and killed with their boots yeah. on. Yeah. So the fact that he didn't have his boots on, he's like, huh? Never thought that was gonna happen. Well, yeah. Never yeah, thought so I'd die in, a, in said, a hospital this, bed. This is funny, and I think that's what so, said. something like that. Yeah. yeah. And, and apparently that was truly his last words. Mm-hmm. I think he's he's got all that um, existentialist. Yeah you know, more t- like aware of his own mortality wisdom that he just w- would just flow out of that guy. Yes. You know what I mean? And just, it's just, uh, yeah, you can't, you can't escape it if you're around him until he just tells you to leave. I do. I just want to say one thing too, like the George P. Cosmatos directed uh, thing of this movie, like the, the reason you can tell it's directed by him is because they do like the whole montage of them, like killing everybody and getting everybody. And even the guy relaxed and smoking pot, he fucking blows yeah, him away. Fuck that. them. And they get to the river scene, and they kind of calm down a little bit because uh, Doc gets a little sick, and he has to go to Charlton Heston's house. Everyone does, yes. you know. And then like they rest up a bit, and then uh, Doc has this thing with Johnny Ringo. Johnny Ringo dies, and then back to killing montage. <laughs> like, fuck yeah! Like, that's how you know this is directed by George B. Cosmatos. Oh uh, yeah, we took a little Not break. Anyways, let's go fucking <laughs> anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I, I'm, I'm guessing Sean's on the same page as me. Like the the ending beyond this is just like. It's just I and I guess this is real life and that's what just sort of makes me go I don't really like this character. He's just like Wyatt's brother's dead, so is his best friend. Wyatt never saw his other brother again, by the way, who lost the use of his arm. Mm-hmm. We don't know like whatever. His wife of 10 years died of a broken heart and a drunk drug overdose, who by the way was waiting in their next town for a note or a, f- or a call from <laughs> Wyatt. Wyatt said I'll write you and never did. She died of a drug overdose. Why cool. never? Got, I got a crate of laudanum. That's fine. With that's me. fine. Why it never cried about any of this? But it's okay because he's in love with a woman whose family is rich. She's just so random and spontaneous. And don't worry, man. I just kind of do whatever I want. Do you know why I'm spontaneous? Because my family's rich. I've never had to my care about anything. <laughs> I've never had a problem in my life. <laughs> I just <laughs> wanted to be an actress. Even uh, earlier, actress. even earlier, he's like apologizes for freaking out at her after his brother dies or whatever. Like, cause she's like mad at him. <laughs> nah, oh. He's like, hey, I just want to say, I forgave you the minute you said. It. He's like, really? Yeah, I just, I'm just spontaneous. Like I'm just that. spontaneous. I just, I just forgive people every now and again. I just wanted a hug. I just don't even care. <laughs> whatever. I don't even care. It's just fun. And I, oh, sorry guys, I have to say it. The moment when he when he runs out into the rain and. <laughs> Josephine is just like, why? What's wrong? Oh, get away! And then Maddie's right behind him. What's going on? Just get away! <laughs> <laughs> I'm in a house, box. 
the emotion. <laughs> I'm not happy right now. <laughs> and they're just both like, oh, oh. I swear, you could have written that into Wet Hot American Summer. <laughs> you 100% could have. One of them just goes up against a door and <laughs> just, uh, stays there. I don't know. I I just I still will stand by the fact that I just don't like that this is how this how real life ended up for Wyatt Earp. He he, you know, like, still he, By the way, th- that was his fourth wife. Josephine was. He had bad luck. His first wife died uh, in childbirth. His second wife uh, was killed or something like that. And then his third wife w- died of a drug overdose. I'm just saying. I still feel bad. Sure for can Maddie. pick him. I st- I feel bad for Maddie. I do not feel bad for Josephine. Yeah. Well. Well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Holy shit. Please close this out. <laughs> oh, I have to be the one that closes it out. Well, everybody, we've dissected well, we, this movie. Well, guys, we've dissected this movie with a uh, scene by scene with a modern eye, and we got to uh, give our modern uh, ratings. Mike, what you got, man? Well, you know, you want to go to me? All right. Well, I'll tell you <laughs> well, what. I'm going to go to you first, man. I'll tell what you, you what. I mean, you know, I really do like this movie, okay? I, I enjoy this movie. I really like it's It's great every time you watch it. There's fantastic scenes. I like that it's pretty historical in the grand scheme of things, that there was a good enough historical figure to, like, write a movie that was based on that, but it was still entertaining and awesome. It falls apart for me. I didn't. I forgot how just goofy it got at the end. For as serious as this movie was, the just the 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 what do they what do they call it? The Wyatt's ride, vengeance yeah, ride, vengeance or something ride, like that. Yeah. I, it just maybe caught me at the wrong chord uh, in this moment in time in life. I I just didn't like the ending. If you could give me maybe the first hour. I think I think I love I think I'd be way higher than this. But in reality, I'm going to try to be as truthful as I can. I'm a, I'm a 7.01 mm-hmm. on this movie. Okay. All right. Sean, how about you, man? Yeah, AJ. It's not so easy to go first, is it? All right, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I I love this movie so much. Uh, this is one of my one of the movies that I could just kind of put on and kind feel a comfort movie. Kind of. It's 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 kind of there. Um, but like rewatching it kind of critically like this, I do kind of agree with some points you make with like the goofiness and I like, I've always thought, um, like critically watching this, that the Josephine stuff doesn't work for me, man. Like it just slows it down so much. And I hate the music at that point (laughs) too. The music sounds like when like they're getting chased by jaws and jaws. I don't like that, but I gotta say like, uh, we didn't really talk about it, but the rest of the score I fucking love. Um, it's a man movie. I fucking love like all all the goddamn violence and shit. All the like, badass lines everyone has to say. It's kind of tough for me because I thought I was gonna be like super high on this. But, I uh, I kind of we were like, oh, we're doing Tombstone. Yeah, I'm uh I'm a seven point eight nine. I think that's seven? that's still a four star movie on Letterboxd. Yeah, don't so get mad knows. at Sean here, okay? What was again there, Sean? Seven point eight nine. Seven point eight Mike. nine for the Seaner. <laughs> I gotta say, like. <laughs> <Shut up. laughs> <laughs> I don't you like know, this, Sean. I, I gotta say, man, like I, I kind of agree with you. You yeah, know, like yeah, yeah. you know, <laughs> you guys have already said all the cool stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like rewatching this movie, like really kind of, I really did enjoy a lot of it, but there is a point where, uh, <laughs> there, there is a point where like it does fizzle for me, and I understand why. Like I used to watch this movie, and I would just watch it in pieces and parts because mm-hmm. I would. I remember specifically thinking at one point when I was a kid watching the opening scene of like Curly Bill at the uh, the the Mexican wedding, and thinking this is a completely different movie, and I turned it off. Yeah. yeah. But then I, I but then I picked it up at a different spot. Where you see uh, Doc Holliday playing cards, and I'm like, "Oh, Tombstone!" Yeah. So I completely understand why I did that as a kid because there are absolutely parts that I don't I don't care for, like a lot of the love story aspect and this love triangle that doesn't like, feels pretty one sided. Yeah, <laughs> feels like a feels like a ninety degree triangle. <laughs> um, to be honest with you, a uh, polygon of if, some sort, if you will. Um, but yeah, I and I I think that there are parts where it does get to the point of, cool. I think we've kind of seen it all, right? 
like we were probably good. We could have probably had a better movie that ended at the OK Corral and re- reassessed 30 minutes to be put back into that to fill that that out more of like the brothers and everything. So that all being said, I'm still highly entertained by this movie. I love the cast. Um, I enjoy the music. I enjoy a good Western. And this is right in there for this time frame for me. So, um, yeah, I, I think I'm going to stick by this. I, I am actually going to go uh, up a little bit on this. And I'm going to give it a 7.75. Nice. That's not bad, fellas. If you average that out, that is a 7.55. Uh, overall, that's going to take us on the charts of all the movies we've done. 7.55 falls in at number 52, right below Ace Ventura, right above The Warriors. Okay. Is where that's going to fall in, in, our, in our frame above, of movies. Above The Warriors? Right above The Warriors. Mm. Mm. That's tough. Oh. Hey, I got an idea. What if... What if we did our finally where we change our ratings? We show? could do that. We could do that. Unless for some reason that already came out. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> we don't know. We're backloading a lot of episodes. <laughs> I don't even know anymore, guys. <laughs> Maybe we should finally go back and make some changes to some ratings. We're changing we our primary hosts. You know, like we, we don't <laughs> know are, what's going to happen. Things next. are fucking weird. <laughs> things are getting real freaking strange. <laughs> <laughs> well, we hope you enjoyed the episode. Thanks for being here. Tune in next week. Airplane voted on by our Patreon members, followed by the good Kevin Costner era, Field of Dreams. Oh yeah. man, get ready yes. for a cry! Hum- humble Costner, humble Costner, humble, Costner. Yeah. humble Pie good, Costner. That's yeah. a good band name. All he had to do was go to Iowa. That's it. Yep, but then he left and turned yeah. into a dick when he went to Montana. Fucking Montana. <laughs> <laughs> also, if you're new to the podcast, go back this time last year. Austin Powers yeah, oh, man. Yes. was a fun, fun episode. We think you will love it. That was a good one. Yeah? Yeah, man. That was a great episode. Guys, we hope you would go back and listen to some of our old episodes. If you're just not somehow getting enough of us with all the great content we've been doing, like on Mondays, we're doing brunch now. Hello. Make sure you're joining Hello. in. Hello. Hello. Um, check us out on social media so you can stay up on all the good stuff we're doing though just look for confused breakfast at confused breakfast anywhere on the social medias um check us out on youtube if you're not watching us on youtube i don't know what you're doing you're getting all the fun silent jokes you know like they had back in the day um all that good content that you can have on youtube all right and uh by all means please leave us a five-star review we love being able to read them five stars on apple podcast or spotify you can go to confusedbreakfast.com and get some of our merch. You can get some dusters. You can get some shirts. You can get some um, pins. Yep, there they are. Uh, you can get some koozies. Um, yeah, I think you could get some uh, your your own branded handled uh, 44 Magnums. I think. Yeah, you can sippy get your cups. own sippy cups. Sippy cups. Yeah. Get them all there. Go to our same damn website, confusedbreakfast.com, and see all of our ratings of every movie we've ever done. See AJ's ratings. See Mike's ratings. See my ratings. And then see the whole show's ratings. Please support our sponsors. Click on the links in the episode. Those guys are what make this show run. Go get some cool stuff, some perks with them. Support us directly at patreon.com slash confuse breakfast. We are produced, produced by the Upload Media Group in Cedar Rapids, uploadmediagroup.com. Craig on the controls with the cowboy hat on. Agro Craig. (laughs) Yeah. And we are in the Cloud 10 iHeart Podcast Network. Learn more at Cloud. 10.fm. We're your fucking huckleberries. See you later. You're Daisy if you don't. Say wham. <laughs>